uh, co-host star, the Admiral Bill Stubblefield, two star. It's great to be here on this thankful day. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, New York Times best-selling author, retired safety engineer, former firefighter, EMT, John Gilstrap. Good morning. You know, this guy, Gilstrap, the more you talk to him, the more you learn about what's in his background, the more I think the, book should be, the books he writes should actually be about him. Yeah, talking earlier about this uh, explosion in some factory going around in his early life, not getting the dust off the walls and tasting them, be sure yeah, he could he recognize was the chemicals. A dust so. taster a for dust a couple taster, of years. Yeah. I, was, I'm survived, I was absolutely he not that. <laughs> he, well, he would go into buildings and yeah. for certain violations, yeah. if the dust tastes like a certain chemical, he knows that's the way he did it. Like the horse whisperer, okay. he was the dust. Yeah liquor there's and a great there's i understand a, he was very good at it as well oh the best they said he was the best ever there's a great line in my cousin Vinny where he says you hear what he just said that's all bs yes <laughs> <laughs> whatever that guy just said yeah. it's all bs yeah. Right. yeah our guest via telephone is summer barrett and following the re-election uh with the pause in between of donald trump Summer contacted me and said, I don't think the female vote is being understood or represented well in your discussion. So I said, are you volunteering to straighten us out? She said, if I must, I must. Summer, good morning to you. <laughs> you put it way more politely than I did. <laughs> I, I don't think your text was rude to me, do you? <laughs> no, 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 it wasn't rude. But <laughs> no, not, it, you know, it was, a, it was a direct to the point Summer Barrett text. I get nothing but direct to the point texts from the Barrett family. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Saves me from wasting yeah. time on fluff. And there's a, one thing I hate, it's people. wasting time, like two <laughs> hours fluff. a day, every day. <laughs> we are very direct people. <laughs> and we are now Barrett. getting it back twofold with our two and a half year old. <laughs> See, what goes it's karma, baby. What goes around comes around. Yeah. How, how's the family? How are the children? They're great. Um, aside from the two and a half year old meltdowns, it's all wonderful. <laughs> Yeah, that's just Jason. What about the kid? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I do. I do have four children. My my two tiny ones, Jason and the dog. Yeah, so. well, that's good. I'm, I'm I'm glad you have a nice family. That's good. Everyone should have yeah. a good family. Everyone is great, though. Vandy's healthy. Berkeley's a wild man. They're they're great. And they all like tummy rubs, right? That's the that's what settles them all down. Right? Children and dogs and Jasons. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, so what uh, what part of the female vote uh, did we not understand or did we get wrong, if any of it, Summer, or is there just something else you wanted to have it represent? Well, no, I, I, I the, the panel on Friday is, is um, very male-dominated, and I think a lot of people have, particularly Democrats, have been really shocked to learn that women by I, I read this by more eggs and milk than abortions um and I, I when i read that line i was like wow well yeah that's exact i think that really kind of sums it up um they seem even on my personal facebook timeline the people are still i mean it's it's like the fear mongering and just completely understanding how women can or completely misunderstanding how women could ever support someone like this and so i just from a female Republican woman perspective, I thought maybe the perspective um, of why we voted the way we did and why, and really not even just Republican women, women in general did not turn out to support Kamala, and even as much as they did for Biden four years ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, like when I'm looking at numbers, she had a seven point lead with women overall and Biden had a 12 point lead with women. So it, it, it I let's think, let's stop there for a second. I, I tell us why you think that gap exists. Um, well, I, I just based completely on data, um, I think I think there are several issues. I think number one is the economy. Uh, women are often the financial gatekeepers of their families, um, and Republicans really capitalize regularly, but especially in this election because of high inflation. I just saw this morning that it rose another 2.6% in October. And I think women more than anyone feel that at the grocery store. Um, I know I do. When I see the price of the things that I'm buying, um, I can't leave Martin's without, you know, a $200 grocery bill. And then I look in my cart and I'm like, what did I even buy, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, for $200? Yep. We've all been there. Um 
Sorry, what was that? Yeah, I said, yep, we can all identify with that. Going to the supermarket yeah, is and, ridiculous. And so, so I think Democrats largely underestimated the fact that that exists and women are, are those financial gatekeepers oftentimes in their homes. Um, and I think they... I, I think they often also try to lump women into this single issue voting block. Um, it, like I mentioned with that, like that thing I read, they were shocked to learn that we buy more eggs and milk than abortions. They just assume and also talk to us like we we are expected to vote a certain way because of one singular issue. Um, and women side, women sided, white women sided with President Trump for the third straight cycle, and then Trump improved on his 2020 margins with Latino women by eight points and young women with by 11 points, which that is also extremely, actually the young women part was surprising to me because of the abortion topic. I, I thought that younger voters may just simply latch onto one issue and maybe they didn't have families and they don't, you know, buy large grocery bills. And, and But really, it, it seems that even with young women, he, he improved his numbers and she didn't. Um, I, so going back to your, your, the reasons, I think the economy, securing the border and immigration policy. Um, and another thing I wanted to read to you was about um, the trans issue. I think um, a lot of people have tried to run from that topic and Trump really just honed in on it and made it an issue. And polling suggests that Kamala's support for those radical transgender policies was actually the single most important issue for swing voters who picked Donald Trump, narrowly beating out the, the economy and the border. And I bring that up because the day after the election, I shared an, in someone else's Instagram post to my Instagram story, and it was a list of reasons as a mom I voted for Trump. And it didn't include anything about the trans issue. Mm -hmm. And I, that day, got three different messages from girl bombs responding that the post needed to add not letting biological males beat up on their daughters in sports. And, you know, I, I'm not to that point yet. So it for me, personally, it wasn't necessarily a big issue at the forefront of my mind. But I think it obviously the numbers support that it did become an issue in a lot of moms' minds, and especially girl moms, and, and I'm sure um, in dads' minds also. Um, Trump, one of Trump's closing pitches was Kamala is for they, them, and Trump is for you. Um, and I don't know, I think that might deserve to go down as one of the all-time great closing pitches because it really proved that, um, the polling proves that people um, people support that idea. So I think... The economy, securing the border, protecting girls' sports. And then the issue that I am most passionate about that Trump has made has made an issue in the campaign and is now making in his upcoming administration um, is the Make America Healthy Again agenda. And that, to me, um, is, is the most important issue and actually made me excited to vote for Trump. Um, I previously have not been excited to vote for Trump just because I don't love his personality, and I at one point didn't actually believe he was a conservative. Um, but him bringing in RFK and really focusing on prioritizing the health of our children and our food is was really the number one issue for me in this election. Time to get rid of high fructose corn syrup, by the way. I'm not even being, I'm not being a smart aleck when I say that. That's that's uh, I think one of the things that you can isolate for the higher diabetes rates in this country. Oh yeah, and but it doesn't. I mean, it really doesn't even start or stop there. Um, they, the dyes in our food is something that RFK really talks a lot about, and it's something that I'm very passionate about. I we've made a big move in our kitchen at home to not purchase foods that are filled with dyes. Um, after Halloween, we came home and I removed all of the candy that had dyes in it. So basically, unfortunately, Berkeley was left with just chocolate candies. But um, to be honest, he didn't even really need those. Uh, he has he has plenty of of treats. Um, 
but we we have realized and we've been educated as to the very the, the harmful impacts of the dyes in our food, particularly on ch- in children. Um, hey, I want to go. Just, I want to get, get off the food thing for a second here, because I know Bill and John have some questions for you. We only have about thirteen minutes left, but uh, quickly back to the abortion issue. After Roe v. Wade was overturned, several states put forth referendums, some conservative states too, to their voters about various types of abortion laws. Mm-hmm. Many of those were rejected soundly by the voters, which made it look like there was going to be a Republican backlash over the abortion issue. Did time just heal the wound and it went away, or did people misread those states, uh, the results of those states' voter referendums when it came to the abortion issue? Because it did not hurt Republicans in, in any way in this election, because Republicans are going to hold on to the House, they're going to grab the Senate, and they're going to have the White House. Well, well I think there's two parts to that that question and two to part two responses one um i don't think the issue went away we saw it we saw it on the ballot in 10 states in the last election and seven of those 10 initiatives passed um so i think two two answers one i think the states that um the pro-life view one were the states where you saw the pro-life republicans own the issue and i think that's a Big, big difference. Um, if we don't own the issue and we don't get out in front of the issue, we the narrative is set for us, and the narrative becomes that we don't support women or um, what whatever they the, the opposition wants to paint it as. But in in Florida, for example, Governor DeSantis was on social media and in the news holding press conferences, specifically opposing that amendment. And he owned the issue, and he did a one fantastic job owning that issue. He had um, medical professionals, he had women, he had young women, he had he had women from all walks of life on his um, whatever you want to call it, this group that he had formed to oppose this amendment. And he really made it his big his biggest issue, other than I'm sure you know supporting Trump and, and all of the Republicans throughout his state, but. He dominated that issue and he dominated the narrative. And because of that, I think un- voters understood it and, and it resonated with them. And so the pro-life view in that state won. The secondary thing that I will say is I do I think we do not give voters enough credit to um, understand that they can vote for Republicans and then also support or oppose these ballot issues. And especially national Republicans, um, the, the Democrats tried to tell voters that Kamala was going to have some sort of power to reverse the Supreme Court's decision on abortion. And that's just simply not the case. Now that, that Roe v. Wade was overturned, it has been sent back to the states. And therefore, those ballot referendums are the way that voters get to decide. Um, and, and hopefully they understand that. And even President Trump has said that he believes it should be a state issue going forward. And he doesn't support a nationwide ban, a nationwide ban, um, and, and, and that we should allow the voters to decide in the states um, or, or their legislators or whoever, um, but that it's a state issue. And so I think that's why it is not – Thankfully, the voters have seen that you can have an opinion on abortion and vote a certain way on a ballot measure, and and it, the national elections have no um, implications on those things Bill. at this point. Yeah, uh, good morning, Summer. Uh, good the, morning. The victor deserves the spoils or gets the spoils, and in this case, the, uh, the Republicans are the victors, and one of the spoils is the messaging, and you'll have, uh, you can have a field day uh, with the messaging. Uh, some of the things that you're most gleeful about also gives uh, close to 50% of our population a lot of fear. Uh, this will sort out in time, and I'm not about to try to project now what, which way it's going to be. But I agree and I disagree with uh, of what you said. Uh, two things 
I think that uh, Harris was not a strong candidate. I think in time, her smile and her uh, demeanor kind of uh, started going working the wrong way. The vibes disappeared and the issues are not there. Uh, I do not believe, however, uh, that the side issues, the abortion, transgender, immigration, all played a major role. I think it was uh, e- e- uh, the economy, economics, 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 and this is where I think the Republicans did a superb job, and the Democrats did a less of a good job. So uh, I'm uh, I'm taken with a with a huge grain of salt a lot of what you said, uh, but I will go back to my initial premise: uh, uh, the messaging rights have been won by the Republicans, so run with it. So. John Gilstrap. <coughs> I. Oh, okay. You can respond. Sure, go ahead. Uh, I, I just was going to say that the polling suggests that, yes, the economy was a, a major factor. I just noted that polling suggested that the transgender policies actually narrowly beat out the economy in the border among swing voters who picked Donald Trump, which I think is, is a, a big statement. I, and, and something important to talk about. And when you go so ex- when the Democrats have gone so extreme on a particular issue, it does wear on people. And especially, I think, from a mom perspective, on moms, I don't want Vandy to have to p- play sports against a biological male. Um, I don't want her to have to be in a dorm room with biological males. The list goes on and on. And if we don't do something about this issue right now, that will be the reality for her by the time she's 10. Um, And so I think it is a very big issue for moms in particular. Mr. Gilstrap. Yeah, I I, I agree with most of what you said, Summer. And and, but I do think Republicans need to be careful about the the energy of their victory lap here. Um, they certainly gained in all the demographics. They uh, they certainly won over fifty percent of white w- men and women. They gained with Hispanic men and women, but they still are under fifty percent in both categories. They gained with black men and women, but they're woefully under fifty percent. You know, down around under twenty five percent in both categories. So I mean, there's there's a lot of of ground to be gained. One of the most convincing analyses that I have read out of this election actually came in in the New York Post, and I, I actually posted on on my Facebook page. And, and what what it concludes is that people were just tired of 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 being told what to think. People were tired of mm-hmm. apologizing. Um, they were tired of being told that they were bad because of how they were born whether they were you know born white or straight or whatever was the the, the category that they, there was something inherently there to apologize for um they were tired of being told that what was traditionally normal is now no longer normal and i think they were tired of being told that the things like the economy which were clearly broken were in fact not there was a lot of gaslighting that was going on so you mm-hmm. know i th- i think that it was kind of a perfect storm of of people feeling uncomfortable with with the way things were and a lot of people held their nose and pulled the lever for Donald Trump there was an article yesterday actually it was, it, it dominated the news that um, a lot of voters for AOC also voted for Donald Trump which is you can't get to wildly divergent political uh, personalities, but they did it because they wanted the change agent. So I think there's real, there's, we got to be careful. Republicans have to be careful about getting too far over their skis on issue identity and, and not misread the cards here. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't disagree, but I do think it's not just those things that you're mentioning. Um, like I, I, like I said, I don't. I don't disagree. <laughs> I guess I don't have a good response. Mm-hmm. I I don't disagree. I just think that they're like the numbers that I look at after an election. Um, 
just make it seem like – but I will say one point that you made that I definitely agree with is is people are tired of being told how they need to vote or how they're supposed to feel. And that's kind of the point I was making at the beginning. Women, I think, are especially tired of being told or, or assumed that they vote based on one issue as a voting block and that nothing else matters to us. We're all too stupid – and uneducated and whatever adjective they use to describe us from their ivory towers um, that we, we cannot vote on any other issue. There's no possible way. And those assumptions are the reason why women and, and Latino voters and black voters and, and the list goes on and on, all of these voting blocks that have voted in stronger numbers for Trump than they did for Kamala and in, in and in recent years, they've gone. It's gone the other way. I, I agree, one hundred percent. Those people are tired of being talked to and and just made to think you have to vote this way. I mean, we even saw gains among black men. And I kept saying that Obama speaking to black men, the way he was speaking to them, was actually the Democrats thought it was helping them, but I think it was hurting them. Telling them this is the way you have to vote because you're black. Um, I, I think that exactly what you said. People are tired of being talked to in that manner, and and assume that they're too stupid to make decisions for themselves and for their their family. And, and this was one way, was it? I'm sorry. What was that? And this was one way. One way of what, though? That that the uh, Democrats were talking down, and the Republicans were not. Well, not, and that was the point I was going to make. That that if if yeah, the Trump administration. If the Trump administration doesn't read their own tea leaves and understand that if they don't find a way to open their tent wider and tone down the rhetoric and not well, it seems like tell the did, other huh? side what they should think. How, how, could, how could they open the tent wider than Trump made gains everywhere except with black females in this election? How can you open a tent wider than that? They rejected what was. That doesn't, that's not necessarily accepting him. That's right. And and I just think I, they need actually, to be careful I, I about think, how they read the tea leaves. Two minutes, Summer, go ahead. I think they did. I think they do accept him. And and the, I have, like I said before, I've never been a huge Trump fan um, just because I have not personally liked his demeanor and, and the way he speaks and that sort of thing. But in in the last several months, I have noticed something that I find particularly um, endearing about him. He does not care what setting he is in. He is authentic to himself. He wears the same navy blue suit, the same red tie. He is he is a billionaire, and he acts like the same person regardless of what setting he's in. I saw him work in a McDonald's. I saw him go to a black barber shop in New York City. I saw him, uh, what was the thing he did in Michigan? Oh, the trash truck thing. I mean, and, and regardless of what setting he was in, he was authentic to himself. And then on the, on the the flip side, you had Kamala, who everywhere she went, she takes on a new accent. She would um, try to dress the way she was supposed to dress or have the conversation she was supposed to have, rather than just being authentic to who she was. And Trump just doesn't care. He doesn't care who he's supposed to quote unquote be or, you know, like you would have never seen him wearing camo out in the woods trying to, um, you know, resonate with white men voters. You know, like be he just wouldn't have done that because it's not authentic to him. So he wouldn't have put on um, that Michael Dukakis helmet and ridden around in a tank, is that what you're saying? <laughs> or he did that with the, tr uh, with the trash truck. He did the okay. same thing. Hey, we oh, got we got to get going here. Riot. Summer, thank very uh, thank you very much for your time this morning. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Have a great morning there. He's, uh, okay.